Hey guys, what's up? Darcy here at Six Strings Nine Lives. Here we are a little past the halfway point of 2023. So what I thought I'd do today is do a quick recap of the new releases that I've uh, personally picked up so far. Uh, so far I've picked up 10. I also have seven on pre-order, which we'll talk about. Another thing we'll talk about is what we think is coming or what we're hoping is still coming out. I got a list here of uh, probably 10 or 12 bands that I'm, you know, hoping release something still in the calendar year of 2023. Um, also in the comments, tell me what I've missed, what I still need to, you know, pick up or check out. I, I always appreciate the recommendations. We can't buy everything. It, it's literally, it's impossible to pick up everything. And it seems as I get older, it just feels like it's impossible to listen to everything I have. So kind of pacing myself, being a little more selective in my, uh, purchases as far as you know new releases or taking on newer bands like i said before i don't shut the door on newer bands but uh, they got to really blow me away to kind of uh, you know for me to make space on my shelf or spend the money but anyways we will uh, start here in chronological order of, of releases so we'll start right in january and we'll work our way till june then i'm going to mention those seven or so albums that i have on pre-order uh, and again, please let me know what you've got on pre-order, what you're looking forward to, and again, what I've missed. Out of these 10 I'm going to show you, there is four that are, could be, well, they're considered by me to be contenders for album of the year. One of them you might actually be surprised, uh, um, but some really good uh, albums have come out so far. So let's get started with... Uh, the first one that I picked up, and this was an automatic pre-order, really was looking forward to this. First album since 2017, but this is the 11th studio album from Obituary. <clears throat> As I've said before, this is my kind of death metal. Nice and simple. Uh, came out January 13th. Dying of everything, if I did not mention that. First single was called The Wrong Time. Super groovy. It Actually, it just, it was a real uh you know head bobber but uh listen to that tracks probably 30 times before the uh album was even released which i'm bad for i need to i need to uh any of you out there that can hold off and not listen to these early release tracks because i mean god sometimes they are releasing a track four months ahead of time and i don't know i just have no willpower i guess but so there was my first purchase uh, of the year, 11 studio album by Obituary. Uh, coming up next, actually, the shirt I'm wearing. Not the exact shirt, but uh, if you don't know this band, this is uh, just superb blackened speed metal, blackened thrash, whatever you want to call it. This is the third album from Scotland's Hell Ripper. James McBain does an awesome job. This is Warlock's Grim and Withered Hags, released February 17th. If you don't know Hell Ripper, I, I just can't recommend them enough. And if you don't know Hell Ripper, start right here. Work your way back. This is only the third studio album. Uh, this guy is going to be a force to be reckoned with for years to come. Uh, super talented, and this is just the next level uh, that he has reached on this album. Just superb. Uh, check out the couple of my favorites the title track the title track literally has everything you can imagine uh, warlock's grim and withered hags check out that one and another one of my favorites the cursed carrion crown uh, recommend that one too love this colors love these colors love the album cover uh, hell ripper that was what was that february 17th next one on the list my favorite thrash band if you watch my channel for any extended period of time you know is overkill i've been listening to overkill since taking over album in 1987 but this is their 20th studio album released april 14th called scorched um you know long wait on 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 this one too uh, wings of war was 2019 so we had to wait four years you know covid and all that bullshit in between but i would say overkill benefited from the extra time Another top-notch album and one of my contenders for album of the year uh, for sure. 
There's the back cover. Uh, first single was awesome called The Surgeon. Personal favorite track on here is called Fever. Check that one if you out if you'd like. But there's the 20th studio album from Overkill. I, I hope to see them on tour this year. That would be awesome. Next up, actually, and most of these I've shown in an in a update video. That's usually where I'll do my kind of mini reviews. I don't do many full-blown reviews, but I always review what I buy as far as new releases. And this one, I didn't even show in a video yet, but I'll say it right now. You know what? I don't hate Metallica, but... I have not shown this because I just picked it up on CD. This is 72 Seasons. I've heard it plenty. Uh, and since I've owned it, I think I've only spun it once. Um, you know, just, I guess we should go way back. I first just discovered Metallica just before Master of Puppets came out. I've been into them. I got to see them on the Master of Puppets tour in 1986. Metal Church opened for them. Um, yeah, and like I said, I do not hate Metallica. There's some of their albums you'd be surprised that I like as much as I do. Uh, but so this one, it's just, I I'm always feel like I'm expecting more out of these guys, but you know what? They're right in their pocket and uh, not a bad album. Just not something I've just been wanting to put on again. But you know what? It'll come around, I'm sure. But there's 72 Seasons, which was also released on April 14th, you know, along with my favorite Overkill album. So I had a, I had a lot a lot to do on April 14th, uh, even without this one. But yeah, people are saying this one's too long, things like that. But you know what? Metallica have been putting out long albums since... You know what? Even the Black album was 62 minutes, but Load was their longest album to date. 79 minutes and then right death magnetic was probably 77 minutes or 78 minutes hardwired was 75 uh, minutes something like that they're always in there whatever i generally with me the more music i get to hear uh, from some of these older bands is okay with me but yeah it is a lot to sit through but they've been doing it for years all right next up on the list is uh, where are we here? April 21st. This is a band I only, I knew of, but I really only discovered on their last album. But this is the newest album from Anthem, released April 21st. This is a Japanese uh, metal band. You know, I, I think they refer to them as the Japanese Judas Priest. There, there's definitely some priest vibes in here, but this is Crimson and Jet Black. So really kind of got into these guys on their album from 2019 called Nucleus, which was a nuclear blast release. And what they did on that release was they re-recorded, I don't know, probably 15 or 16 songs in English. Because prior to that, they had only had one other full English album, and actually Graham Bonnet was the vocalist for that. It was kind of a special deal album type of thing. But most of their albums are kind of a mix of their native language, Japanese, and English. You know, even, you know, half and ha not even half and half, but this is a full English album and their first, um, first full English album to be released as a new studio album. Nucleus, like I said, was re-recorded songs, but it is great too. Um, check out a couple of my favorite tracks. Actually, the first single was really good. Wheels of Fire, but my favorite track on this album is called Blood Brothers. Go check that one out. Um, very cool cover. Very cool band. Looking forward to checking out some of their uh, back catalog. You know, if there's a, some couple of reissues, things like that. They got some good distribution on this one with Reaper Entertainment. All right, let's check my list. All right, released May 5th. Seven studio album from Winger. This and the reissue of their album from 1993, Pull, is kind of what pulled me back into these guys. I love their debut album. I know it's whatever, glam metal, hard rock, whatever you want to call it, but I, I loved their debut album, you know, 17, and Ma Madeline is my favorite winger song. Uh, but this, this one, and this is the one I was talking to you about if I didn't mention it already, 
this easily could be a is a contender for album of the year it is that good these guys are top notch musicians you know reb beach on guitar kip winger uh yeah just a very solid lineup and you know not a lot of lineup changes these guys are now a five piece which includes <clears throat> the guy that replaced paul taylor and now paul taylor's back so i mean man but this is their first album in nine years since um better day is coming but this one is to me is the best of their newer stuff and uh, looking forward to picking this one up on vinyl actually it is getting released august 4th and i will uh ship this cd off to a good friend of mine who needs to have this in his collection but that one so that was may 5th and then another one came out on may 5th this is the sixth studio album from uh enforcer so um i call them newer bands so anything from the year 2000 to you know to to, to today is a kind of a newer band to me but Enforcer is whatever whatever you want to call it, new wave of traditional heavy metal, but <clears throat> they got their own sound. But this is a wicked cover. Um, first album since 2019's Zenith, which that one was a bit of a letdown to me. Not a total train wreck, but it just, they experimented on a couple of tracks and then they just kind of just uh, there's uh, there's one great track i forget that last track was our second last track on zenith is awesome but this one much better uh man i need some glasses to read these tracks but uh what was the first single there actually is a there was like three singles um let's go with there we go coming alive just listen to coming alive that is a track that really sums these guys up so sixth album and in in their in those six albums there is plenty of good stuff but uh nuclear blast release like i said may 5th check out some enforcer if you haven't already next up on the list is kind of about as extreme as it gets here at planet six strings and that is a band that i've kind of just latched on to over the past year, year and a half or so. Did not know their early work, have went back and checked out their first four albums and a couple of EPs. Still not for me, but their latest four albums and including this brand new release from May 12th. This is Cattle Decapitation. Terracite, I had this on pre-order as soon as I saw it available. This is... I, I don't know. These guys are, honestly, they're kind of in a league of their own to me. There might be other bands out there that are similar to, to them, but I, I don't know those bands. But this one has got the perfect mix. I'm not much of a black metal guy. Um, death metal, I, I do like death metal. Uh, I'm not into super, super extreme metal, but this has got some elements of everything um, back on the album Mono Monolith of Inhumanity, they introduced some kind of some high uh, high vocals, um, Travis Ryan did, and they continued that on t through the Anthropocene, Extinction, Death Atlas, and right into this album. This, uh, I'll tell you right now, this is a definite contender for album of the year. There's just... There's really not a weak track on here. Some of my absolute favorites are um, Sol Solastalgia is awesome. Dead End Residence, uh, A Phobic Doom. Check out that track. But yeah, this, like I said, this is a, probably a, about as extreme as it gets here. But love this album. Uh, and I love their past four albums. I've, I have checked out, you know, some of their earlier stuff like Humanure or... To serve man and i just no not for me so i will just stick with the four that i have <clears throat> okay here we are coming up may 26th and this one i was hoping would happen i did not know what would happen to metal church after mike Howe passed away actually coming up on two years um, mike has been gone rest in peace mike Howe. but 
Metal Church returned with a brand new album, Congregation of Annihilation, with Mark Lopes on vocals. And uh, yeah, besides um, besides the, the minor complaint I had that I mentioned that some of the vocals he tries a little too hard, like I said, minor complaint, because this is a great album. I love Kurt Vanderhoof. Just writes great tunes, always catchy stuff. Um, here's the track listing. But yeah, really happy to have Metal Church back. They are out on tour. Hope to see them. If they come anywhere close to me, I will, uh, you know, and close, I mean, probably within a, a five-hour car ride vicinity type of thing, but I would love to see them. So this one came out on May 26th. And then finally, with the new releases, uh, and I did pick this one up on vinyl. Also, it has not arrived, but I'm, I'm a big Raven fan, and I've said it before, you're probably not getting the big album of the year with these guys, but you always get a fun album and a good album. And here's their newest one, released June 30th, All Hell's Breaking Loose. Uh, first on Silver Lining Music, they uh, switched from SPV Steam Hammer. I uh, can't wait to get the vinyl version of this. Uh, that cover is super cool. So this is the second one with Mike Heller on drums, which if you know the band, Mike has added a new dimension to this band. Uh, you know, the Gallagher brothers already do a great job, but Mike is just, uh, he's even stepped up his game more on this album, which I will talk about in, a, in my next update because I will uh, give you a little bit more in-depth review on this, but Mike is a superb drummer, and um, Metal City was really good, and you could hear what Mike already added to that one, but he's actually stepped it up on this one. So, yeah, All Hell's Breaking Loose by Raven. So this is their 15th studio album, still going, still touring. So that is the 10 releases that I picked, new releases that I picked up so far. Now, some of the ones that I have on pre-order... Let me see. I got to check my sheet. I wrote them all down because I can give you some release dates. Uh, actually, into July already. So the newest one was released here just a couple of days ago on July 14th. And that's the sixth studio album from Evile called The Unknown. I've listened to the album once in full so far. They definitely took a little bit of a, a different approach to this one. I'll tell you, I wasn't fond of the first single they chose. Uh, because there is better songs on that album and uh but i am not gonna uh, come to i'm not gonna jump to conclusions yet because i even the one time that i heard it it was good and i liked um hell hell unleashed with uh you know old drake's first album taking over the vocals things like that uh what's next i pre-ordered the newest the fifth studio album from vandenberg called sin I picked up Vandenberg 2020. That one had uh, Ricky, is there, no, Ronnie Romero on vocals. This one, they've changed the vocalist. I forget who it is, but the first two singles are actually pretty good. So a new one from Vandenberg coming out on August 25th. Uh, another band that I've been following for since day one, which I recently showed on a video, um, one of my favorite al German metal albums of all time. That is UDO Animal House. But here we are, 18 albums later, brand new album coming out August 25th called Touchdown. And the big news is uh, Peter Baltes is reunited with Udo. Uh, you know, two original Accept members back together again. So Peter is a full-time bass player now and appears on their newest album called Touchdown. So that one is, uh, like I said, getting released August 25th via Atomic Fire Records. What do we got next? Um, Primal Fear, Code Red, 14th studio album, getting released September 1st. I have that one pre-ordered on CD. I really like Primal Fear. They're just another band of consistency. I, I don't mind that. I have my bands that I look to for more out of them. I have my bands that I, you know, hope they're going to come up with something really good and then i got my bands that i just no problem fire me a, a another album you know if it sounds a little same like i said i don't give a shit 
So brand new uh, studio from Primal Fear. Actually, their first one since uh, 2020. Uh, Matt Sinner had some health issues and stuff. He looks like he's on the mend and they're ready to go back out on tour. Number, what else we got? Number four on my list that I've already pre-ordered the 16th studio album from Cannibal Corpse. Yes, I just said Cannibal Corpse. That is a band that I've, honestly, over the years, I thought were more of a joke, like a jokey band, but they're, you know what? I've really dug into them lately and really, I'm really enjoying it. It is simple, straightforward death metal and the, the new um, single off of their new studio album coming out called Chaos Horrific. What's it called? Blood Blind. It's awesome. Pre-ordered that one. That one is getting released September 22nd, if I didn't say that. Um, what do we got next? KK's Priest. Uh, <clears throat> now, I, I love KK Downing. I was hoping after that, uh, you know, little um, kind of reunion or whatever, the, the, when they played live for the uh, Rock and Roll Hall, Hall of Fame induction, I was hoping that would spark something. I have always been in the camp of hoping KK would rejoin Priest, but I, I honestly just don't think that's going to happen. So the next best thing is he's putting out his own stuff with Ripper on vocals which uh, I don't mind it in the least. Like I said before, when um, Sermons of the Sinner came out, which it, it's no firepower, it's not Judas Priest, but it's good. I, I do enjoy it, and I'm looking forward to the new one that is getting released September 29th called The Sinner Rides Again. And, and if you didn't know K.K. Downing was in Judas Priest, he will remind you because, I mean, the name... The, the, you know, the throwbacks to the songs, um, the, even the title, The Sinner Rides Again. The latest single was called One More Shot at Glory. So, you know, kind of returning to some song titles. You know, I hope there's not too much bitterness in there with him because he, he is a great guitar player. And, you know, I love Judas Priest is, is my favorite traditional heavy metal band. And, uh, yeah. Anyways, looking forward to the new one from KK's Priest coming out. We already covered that. All right, and then finally, one I have on pre-order is Iron Savior called Firestar. One single out already. Kind of, uh, you know, right in that power metal, you know, Primal Fear, Gamma Ray. I mean, actually, Kai Hansen was in this band in the beginning, but they're so much more than the band that Kai Hansen was once in, which they are re reissuing the three albums plus, I think they're actually re-releasing -re their, as a package, CD package, <clears throat> um, here shortly with the first five Iron Savior albums uh, and one EP. So Kai is on the first three, but uh, He's not on these latest ones, and these latest ones are fantastic. Actually, they're released from 20, 2021, Skycrest. I think it was 2021. Skycrest is superb. And uh, the new single off of Firestar, great. Definitely going to pick that one up. And, uh, yeah, and a couple of things I have written down of bands that I'm hoping still will come out with albums. And let me know in the comments, too. I got uh, King Diamond. Uh, Merciful Fate, I thought we'd get kind of a, like, been waiting since, what, 2013 for a King Diamond album. It's long overdue. Or is it 2013? Yeah, I think 2013. No, 2007, I think. But regardless, long time for King Diamond, Merciful Fate. I thought we'd get a kind of a double whammy. They'd, you know, release both at the same time type of thing. Uh, Canadian band that I really enjoy that is long overdue for a release is Cauldron. Another um, band that I've really gotten into over the past four or five years is Ram. They have not had a studio album since, I think, 2018. So due for one. Heard some rumblings about a new Sabotage studio album. So hopefully that one. Um, Testament, you know, they said they were going for three years, but I think they're on track for 2024. So I wouldn't hold your breath on a new Testament album or Death Angel album or Anthrax album till 2024. So I'm that's that's my prediction for sure. 
Judas Priest is pretty much um, set in stone for probably, I would say, first quarter of 2024. Uh, you know, those of you guys that collect vinyl, guys and girls that collect vinyl, the lead time on vinyl is anywhere from nine months, nine to 12 months to get to get everything sorted, printed out. And, uh, there, you know, we just maybe we just need more record plants. I have no idea. But uh, a couple other bands, I would wouldn't be a crushed if I heard they were putting out new albums. That would be Vader and uh, another death metal band that I really enjoy is uh, Ace Fix or Asfix, sorry. A um, couple that I've missed, and let me know what else I've missed in the comments, but a couple that I still might pick up is the new one from Night, Night Demon. Um, Elegant Weapons, I don't know. I I just don't know if I would listen to it a bunch, but it does have, uh, um, sorry, I'm losing my, Richie Faulkner, uh, his side project with uh, Ronnie Romero on vocals called Elegant Weapons. That was only released about a month ago. Another one that I did listen to and kind of passed, be, uh, but I'll be honest, I've never really been an extreme fan. So they came back with their sixth album. Yes, Nuno is a fantastic guitar player. I am not going to argue that, but um, i just never been a fan of, of Gary's voice and, uh, you know, songs like More Than Words and Get the Funk Out and stuff. It's just was never my cup of tea, but let me know in the comments anything that you're looking forward to or that you've already know that's confirmed that you will pick up and uh any of these ones that I am uh, that I've showed showed today shown today uh let me know if you enjoy those ones too but that is it for today and until next time stay heavy <laughs>